welcome back. I'm Gus, I'm an editor, an animator, and a visual effects artist. Welcome to Brick Film School, the series where I teach you how to get started on your filmmaking journey. Today I'll be sharing how to get started in visual effects, talking a bit about the programs I use, and giving you tips and tricks on how to get started on your own visual effects journey. As we get further into the series, I'll do uh, deep dives into very specific aspects of uh, visual effects and stuff like that. So if there's anything you want to see that isn't covered in this video, uh, comment that below and we'll be getting to that at a later date. The world of visual effects is very vast and endless and you can focus on very specific uh, aspects of it, but today we'll be focusing on getting started as a one-man show, either for animators or any form of filmmaking. If you enjoy this video, remember to like and subscribe. I upload every single week, so you're not going to want to miss it. What I use for a majority of my visual effects work is simply Adobe After Effects. This is basically the standard for uh, content creators, video creators on YouTube uh, who do any form of motion graphics or visual effects. The Adobe Suite and programs are uh, subscription based, so it can get kind of expensive. Uh, there are student discounts and other deals that can make it more manageable. And before I say anything else about After Effects, I'm not sponsored by Adobe or anything. It's simply the program that I use and the only program at this price point that can do all the things that it can do. There are some free entry level programs out there they just came along after I started, so that's why I don't have any experience with those specifically. Here's a quick tip and a great way to get started into this world of visual effects. Making subjects jump and fly in animation is one of the simplest compositing tricks you can do, and it's a great place to get started. Take a blank frame, take a character frame, plop them on top of each other, then mask out the rig. Done! And you can either subtract the rig or cut out the character and have him added to the background plate. It simply depends on which one gives you the best result for that frame. You'd be surprised by how many visual effects up the line, or even up to Hollywood movies, uh, use a form of this method all the time. So it's a great place to start, it's one of the easiest things to do, and so try your hand at it if you haven't, and never feel like you're wasting time because this practice will be uh, used all throughout your career. Best way to learn. So if you are a one-man show, uh, just knowing how to cut out a character, or plop an explosion onto your scene, that's not going to get you very far uh, in terms of uh, creating a final product. The most overwhelming thing when it comes to visual effects is the question, where do I start? How do I get started? And I will tell you that right now. Start by acquiring your program of choice, or at least knowing which one you're going to acquire, and then sit down and write your next epic idea. Uh, but uh, shouldn't I try to learn a few things before? Nope. The way I've always learned most things is purely out of necessity. My favorite director's quote, the absence of limitation is the enemy of art. If you have a goal, have a film you want to make, you will not stop until you learn how to make that happen. And this is how creativity sparks, pushing what you have to its limits. So even when I started, all I had to work with was uh, Photoshop and an editing software. But I wanted to make space battles and lightsaber effects and the whole shebang, so I figured out how to make it happen with what I had. This is a principle I always live by. Start with the impossible story. How am I going to do this TIE Fighter scene? I didn't know how I was going to do it when I started, but it forced me to learn how to do it. Now, I briefly want to touch on Blender in this video. I can't do a deep dive right now because the program's literally an endless wormhole. There's a reason that Blender tutorials are typically seven weeks long. <laughs> so a majority of the work that I do is in my compositing software, which is After Effects. Film is a 2D medium, so always treat it as such. That being said, here's how I got started with CGI. CGI, or computer-generated imagery, is something I've always avoided until recently. One, because I never thought it looked that good, and two, because I couldn't wrap my brain around working in a computer's 3D environment at all. Blender is open source and completely free, which is incredible considering what it can do. But when you open the thing up, it's extremely confusing to know where to get started, especially if you haven't opened a CG program before. For someone like me who is very used to the physical world of working, it was uh, very hard for me to adjust to working in this 3D environment. And by this I don't mean I opened the program and it took me like eight hours to figure out how to do it. No, I opened the program one year and then messed around for a little bit and then got frustrated by the 27 hour tutorials and then gave up for months. And that repeated several times over the years. So don't feel bad if you don't get it right away. Some people are like wired for it and they get it like day one. And some people like myself uh, aren't wired for it and have to work a little harder to get there. And that's okay, that's no reason to give up. Now, a step away from Blender for a moment, uh, something that really helped me get started was a program called Element 3D. Uh, it's a plugin for After Effects from uh, videocopilot.net. I'll link the website in the description. Um, it's a super simple to use 3D software that is all layer based, which makes things so much easier. The only problem is that it's not free, 
so it is a bit of an investment. It's just a great program that really helped me get started, and I still use it even to this day. Like, even knowing Blender and all that, it's still much easier to use, so I use it for titles and all kinds of things now, because uh, it looks great. Just so much faster and so much easier for a lot of 3D tasks. So it just really helped me get started, as it not only works very quickly, it lets you see your final results live, which helped me wrap my brain around the 3D world a lot faster. With Blender, it would just take hours to see progress, so that's where it would hold me up getting started. Also, while we're talking about Video Copilot, uh, if you're looking for elements, explosions, and a lot of my sound effects, there's a, uh, there's a sound effects library called Motion Pulse, there's a, there's a Jet Strike bundle that like has fighter jet sound effects, it has aerial explosions, and then there's uh, Action Essentials that has a bunch of explosions, smoke, all that kinds of stuff. So if you want to know where I got a lot of my stuff, that's where I got it. If you're looking for free assets, smoke, those kinds of things, uh, there's another site, Action VFX. I'll link everything down below, of course. Uh, these are just great sites to poke around and just kind of see what kind of free elements or plugins you can get, and then also what may be good investments for uh, down the line. Stuff to save up for, you know, those kinds of things. Now back to Blender for a second. Ever since I started into Blender, there have been a lot of questions about how do you do that, show a tutorial, and you know, I've just been getting started, so it's hard for me to feel like I know enough to teach. But thankfully, someone that I've collaborated with and uh, actually made the first shot of my Mandalorian video, just put up a tutorial on doing the effects pretty much the exact same way I do it. So I'll link that down below if you want to check out like a very fast crash course on these effects, either to jump in now or just to kind of see what exactly it takes to do these things. It's definitely a great fast-paced video to check out after this video. Now let's finally tie all of this together. Once you have your impossible idea and your programs of choice ready to go, now what? Well, figure out your shots. Uh, you gotta start with storyboards. Especially when you're doing an effects film, you're always, for the most part, gonna wanna start with storyboards because it gives you an idea of your workload ahead. These do not have to look fancy at all uh, if you're working alone like I do, as you're the only person that's ever gonna see them, so no need to make your art look really nice. No one's gonna see these, these are just for you to keep track of your shots. This will be giving you an idea of how many effect shots you'll be looking at and exactly what you'll need before starting into it. Then you just gotta break it down, uh, element by element. For example, okay, I need a uh, lightsaber effect. Okay, I need my animation, and then I need a lightsaber blade. Those are your two layers. So capture the element you already know how to, which in this case would be the animation or the video plate, then start into the tutorials. Look up as much variety as you can to kind of get the best look for your video. And the lightsabers are pretty standard, but you can still figure out what techniques work best for you. And don't forget to open up your mind when doing this. A lot of the time, uh, it won't be as simple as, you know, how to make a lightsaber blade, because there are like a million tutorials on that. You know, say you need to do like a, you know, Star Wars explosion, and there aren't a lot of tutorials on that specifically. Okay, we need to break down what a Star Wars explosion is. Uh, it, it, the most basic would be like a lens flare and like a particle uh, explosion, kind of. So, um, you look up each one of those things individually. Okay, how to make a lens flare in After Effects, how to make a uh, particle explosion or a particle emitter in After Effects. And then you kind of learn how to do each of those elements and then you combine them. So you just have to keep an open mind and just know that most effects are just, you know, a bunch of very basic things stacked and layered on top of each other to make something look interesting. So really just think about, okay, what am I going to need to actually make this look like what I want it to be? Now before I get into the Q&A portion of the video, I just want to touch on green screens really quick. There were a lot of questions about green screens in general, and I really need to just make a separate video completely dedicated to that. But I'm not going to leave you without a tip. Um, try using your phone or iPad or, you know, tablet, laptop screen, something as a green screen. You know, just look up online, green screen, blue screen, whatever. Pull that image up on your phone. It's a lot easier when the screen's lighting itself rather than you trying to light a piece of paper completely evenly. So yeah, other than that, more tips to come in a later video. Okay, now for the Q&A portion of this video, coming live from your local Instagram. What's the longest time it took to render a shot? On average, how long does it take? The time per shot varies a lot, but the longest render so far has been Kylo and Rey fighting on the Death Star, which took three days to finish rendering. These things do take a long time, especially computer-generated renders. I mean, what was it that, like, when they did Toy Story, one frame could take 72 hours at max? 
Um, that's a very long time, and, you know, we're looking at peanuts compared to that. It's silly to say, but we should be thankful for that, <laughs> that, we, that we, uh, we don't have to wait that long for a single frame. Um, but yeah, it does take a very long time uh, for these shots to render if you're doing CG stuff. So, it's a nice tool, but uh, there's a time and a place. Is it okay to use Adobe Photoshop to make visual effects? Yes, absolutely. That's how I got started. Uh, the Betrayal Part 1 and like half of the Betrayal Part 2, all effects just done in Photoshop. Um, actually on a version of Photoshop that was so outdated that I could have two saves and then it would crash. So cutting out a Star Destroyer stud by stud was very difficult to only have two saves uh, on this, you know, janky old uh, MacBook Pro. Uh, so yes, Photoshop is actually a great tool to use. If that's all you have, it's a great way to get started. What are the major differences between green screen and compositing and how do I know when to use which? So compositing uh, is actually just the act of taking two or more elements and then smashing them together to create one image. So green screen is just, it's an element gatherer. You want to take, a, you know, your green screen element. So I guess if you have Kylo on a green screen, that's one element. And then you have your background element and then you smash those together. So those are intertwined. and then CGI is completely different where that is actual computer generated imagery. So it's actually like an object that is created in the computer, generated by a computer. And the best time to use one or the other it really comes down to what you think will best accomplish what you want to do. Filmmaking is about having a big toolbox and just knowing what tool to use for which shot. Um, so it really is just a completely shot by shot and personal preference basis and personal knowledge of knowing what's going to give you the best result at the end of the day. And that'll do it for the Q&A portion of this video. If you want to be a part of the next one, follow me on Instagram. And there you go. I hope this video gives you a good starting point for your own visual effects journey. There's obviously a lot that we didn't get to today that will be touched on in later videos in this series. So like and subscribe to be here for the next one. And that's all I have for you. Uh, support what I do on Patreon. On to the next one.